going on everybody? My name is John Solo and welcome to Star Wars 101. You guys seem to love my episode last week about K2SO, so in this episode we're talking about another member of Rogue One, Baze Malbus. Now normally this is where I would give the character a brief introduction, but unfortunately with Rogue One having come out somewhat recently, not much work has been done in the way of expanding Baze's story. So essentially anything that I say to introduce this character would take away from the list of facts I'm about to present. And since since that is the case, I say we just jump right into it. Here are 10 interesting facts about Baze Malbus. Number one. The basics. Baze Malbus is a human being who stands at 5 feet 11 inches or 1.8 meters tall. He was born on the planet Jeddah 53 years before the Battle of Yavin. Number two. Partner in crime. To literally no one's surprise at all, Baze considers Chirrut to be his best friend. He also considers him to be his moral compass and looks towards him for guidance when making difficult decisions. It's unknown exactly how long the duo has known each other, but it's been said that they joined the Guardians of the Wills together, so you can infer it's been a pretty long time. Number three. Guardians of the Wills. So what did Baze do as a Guardian of the Wills? Also, what exactly is a Guardian of the Wills? Guardians are described as followers of the Church of the Force, an underground faith that believes the Jedi need to return to restore balance to the Force. This may actually sound kind of familiar to you guys, as it's the same faith that Lor Santeca considered himself to be a follower of. The Guardians are one of the two known organizations that sprouted from the Church of the Force's beliefs. The other one was called the Disciples of the Wills. The Guardians were responsible for protecting the Temple of the Kyber, an ancient building in the Holy City that they considered to be sacred and also contained Kyber crystals. Number four. Lost Faith. When we meet Baze in Rogue One, he's already had his soul crushed into a compressed core of anger, but that isn't the type of man that he always was. When he and Cheer at first joined the Wills, he was devoutly religious and much more at peace with the world around him and with himself, even though the world around him was as dark as it was with the Imperials invading it all. The Empire didn't really have an effect on Baze's faith until the day they came knocking on the Temple of Kyber's door. And you can probably figure out where this is headed. Being that the Empire had a brand new battle station in the works and they wanted a way to power that battle station, they had a pretty high demand for kyber crystals. So, Baze and the rest of the Guardians were kicked out of the temple and forced to live on the street. It wasn't just Baze and the Guardians though, it was also the entire population of Jeddah that had to endure these really harsh living conditions that the Empire forced on them. Seeing firsthand all of the pain and suffering that Baze's planet was being subjected to caused him to believe less in the power of the Force. Meanwhile, Chirrut just stayed as spiritual as ever. Number five, Assassin. Did you ever find yourself wondering what exactly Baze and Chirrut were up to before Jin came around? Judging by the way that he was introduced to us in the movie, Chirrut looks like he just resorted to being a simple beggar. But one look at Baze and you can sort of tell that he's out there doing more than just begging on the streets. Instead, Baze turned to mercenary and assassin work and found himself in several skirmishes like the one that we see in Rogue One across Jeddah's surface. Number six, Space Politics. Before the Empire invaded Jeddah, Baze didn't really care at all for space politics, and honestly, I can't say I blame him. A tragedy has occurred, which started right here with the taxation of trade routes and has now engulfed our entire planet. However, it was his time in the streets on Jeddah that changed his mind about this. Before, he didn't see much of a difference between the rebels and Saw Gerrera's extremists. As long as everyone's guns were pointed towards the Empire, he was pretty content. It was the destruction of the holy city on Jeddah that finally caused him to take matters into his own hands and put up a fight. Number seven, overpowered. As I'm sure you've all noticed, Baze comes to battle armored to the gills. That comically massive gun that he carries around is called an MWC 35C Staccato Lightning Repeating Cannon, and it is not a gun that you want to be on the business side of. That repeating cannon fires the equivalent of five laser rifles worth of destructive output, and when it's fully charged, stores up to 35,000 rounds. The gun is also illegal for civilian use, which I think makes it perfect for Baze. Number eight, multifaceted. Another cool part about the Staccato Lightning is that it has two different firing modes. The first mode, the standard mode, fires at a rapid rate and it allows bays to spray a wide field of targets. The fitted electroscope has a smart targeting array that takes into account Baze's position and the direction he's facing. And then it group shots into bursts that maximize hits on specified targets. The second mode turns the repeater cannon into a pump action rifle. The way it works is the lower barrel collects energy to produce these shots, which are then 
been primed by a pump action foreguard. Between his gun's two firing settings and Shirit's lipo and wooden stick, I'm sure they had no problems living on the street. Number nine. Opposites. As I've said a couple of times throughout the video, Bayes and Chirrut went in totally different directions after the Imperial occupation. Chirrut stayed spiritual and never lost faith, while Bayes sort of gave into his anger and hatred and it made him a totally different person. We don't know much about his backstory, but the guy became a mercenary and assassin when he was once essentially a monk. So he went from looking like Chirrut to how he looks now. And when you really closely compare the two, you realize just how much effort was put in to making these characters as unlike each other as possible without making it corny or cliche. There's the difference in hairstyles. Chirrut's is short, which is typical of Guardians, while Baze let his hair grow out. There's a stark contrast between the characters' personalities, their weapons, their armor. The list goes on and on. I know that saying the two are opposites may seem pretty obvious and not really worthy of its own fact, but I wanted to give it some conscious recognition because I think when you do this, you can develop a deeper understanding of the significance of Baze's fall from grace. Also, and I may be totally alone on this, Baze and Chirrut kind of remind me of that picture of those two Burmese brothers where they're total opposites of each other. One is the monk and one is the punk. I'm wondering if that's where the idea came from. Probably not. Number 10, Donnie Yen. It turns out that if he wanted to, Donnie Yen could have played Baze instead of Chirrut. When the director Gareth Edwards approached Donnie Yen about playing Chirrut, they only had two actors that they thought could play the character. One was Donnie Yen and the other was Jet Li. Now Jet Li had a salary of $10 million. Meanwhile, Donnie Yen had a salary of $4 million. So Edwards was really wanting Donnie to accept the role. To sort of gauge his interest and also as a backup plan for when Donnie initially said no, Edwards also offered him the the role of Baze. Luckily, he was more interested in playing Chirrut, but in my opinion, that's a pretty cool concept to think about because seeing Donnie Yen play Baze would be like seeing Chirrut if he had lost his faith instead. Mind blown. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Star Wars 101. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button and maybe hit that share button and share this video with one or two friends who also like Star Wars. In case you forgot, my name is John Solo. May the force be with you and remember, John shot first.